Hello, my name is Amy Christian and I work at Dwight Foster Public Library. And today I wanna to share with you about our caregiver kits. These are kits that are made specifically for people who have memory loss and are in a stage of dementia. We have five different kits. We have home life, travel, TV and movies, on the farm, and the one I'm gonna share with you today, patriotism. Before we get started, I do want to share some tips with you about how to engage and do activities with people who have dementia or some form of memory loss. Tip number one, identify an activity. What does that person enjoy? Really think about that. Are they artistic? Are they someone who loves to read? Have they traveled in their life? Do they love baking or gardening? Nature? Did they do any of those things or anything that you can think of that might be of interest to them. Step number or two, tip number two, set up the environment for that activity. So really think about where you should set up the activity. Do you need room to move around? Is there something you need to maybe move out of the way? So that's tip number two. Tip number three, introduce the activity. Be really calm about it. Don't force the activity on them, encourage them, make it really simple, and also continue to engage in conversation. That's always the biggest tip. Tip number four, enhance engagement. Initiate and um, assist them when needed. You can use nonverbal, you can use verbal cues, such as saying, what should we do next? or pointing out something to them. Avoid correcting them, just encourage them and enjoy the time with them. All right, so in our patriotism kit, we have different items. Our first item is a caregiver's guide to dementia. And this is by Laura, uh, Dr. Laura Gilton, Gilton. And she um, talks so much and gives so many great, the tips that I got are from that book, but there's so much more in there and it's just a, an incredible uh, wealth of knowledge in that book. That book also is included in all of our five different um, kits, just so you know that. The next thing is music CDs. Now these music CDs are from World War II and there are different radio uh, broadcasts that have happened. So definitely this is something, if they've served in any form of military uh, field, this would be something that would really spark uh, memory and conversation that you can do with them for an activity. Our next item is witnesses to war, the greatest battles through the eyes of the men who fought them. In here, there's narratives of and quotes from different men, a lot of pictures of the gentlemen who served in the wars. Um, also, lots of pictures of different places that they had fought. And so it's a really uh, a great activity to start with to just engage conversation. Our next item is Wishing Upon a Star, which is a read along, a read aloud book. Now this one is by Lydia Burdens, and I would really suggest this if it is someone who that you really care about that has a, a stage of dementia that is kind of far along, this would be a really great book to read aloud. The illustrations are very beautiful and it's a very simple book, but it's a great start to conversations. Our next item is the puzzle of the Statue of Liberty. And again, big pieces so that they can really grab them and be able to see the whole picture. And again, this is a great way to have an activity that is simple, but is something that they can see the overall picture and be able to have a conversation about it. The last item in our kit is demonstrating favorite things. And these are cards and videos. Now there are four different categories within this. I'm actually going to demonstrate it, um, how to use it um, with a guest who I uh, went to go and see. And their four categories are military, red, white, and blue, Independence Day, and veterans and memorials. And so by using these, um, 
there are cards the, that have questions on both sides. So you, it's a great way to start a conversation. Uh, a lot of men and, and women that have served in the military, that is, those memories are so embedded in their head. And so to engage in conversation about it in a positive manner uh, is a great way to use these cards. Also, just the pictures uh, that are on them are just amazing. So just also uh, just showing pictures. And what do you think of this one? You know, is there something that do you have a memory about this kind of picture? Because the, there's tons and tons of cards. There's a lot of cards. So let's get to meeting our guest. All right. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to give you an idea of how to use the favorite things patriotic collection, the companion photos and the activity cards. I wanted to give you an idea of how you can use these, especially the questions that are in there. And so this is my dad, uh, this is Ray Clower, and I am interviewing him. And so you would be doing this with your, uh, the person that you love or you care about. So you'll be doing with this with them. And it's really just to engage in conversation. A lot of ex-military people really do enjoy sharing some of their stories because it's part of their long-term memory and it's something that they can recall pretty quickly. So I'm just going to have a conversation with my dad and I'm just going to do this as a demonstration for you guys. So what brand branch of service did you choose? I was in the Army. And why did you pick that branch? Uh... That's a good question. I, uh, at the time, I, I, I just thought that uh, it would be the, the one for me. Uh, I, I really never thought about that. I just accepted the Army. Sure. And what, um, I know that you signed up with a group from Pennsylvania, so you weren't even part of a Wisconsin group. How did you get connected to them? When I was in Vietnam, uh, what happened is they were National Guard and they came over to Vietnam and they wanted to integrate the regular army with the National Guard okay. because uh, they thought the army would have more uh, influence uh, and, and probably more knowledge on uh, uh, what was happening over there. So they integrated us together. Okay. That's how it happened. Oh, all right. Okay. And were you drafted or were you enlisted? I enlisted. You enlisted. And how old were you? Oh, I uh, hmm. think I was 18 at the time. Okay. And where were you living when you first went into the Army? I uh, was in Johnson Creek. Living with my uh, brother okay. in a uh, apartment uh, building with Uncle Roger. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And were you single or married? I was single. All right. And you did not have children at that time. No, I did not. Okay. And how did your parents react to you going into the service? Uh, my mom was a little worried. My dad uh, thought it was a good idea. I guess I. Uh, hmm. Uh, I woke up in the morning mm -hmm. and I said, I'm going to go in the Army. I went in the Army two days after I said I was going to do that. Really? Why Why do you think that I just that wanted uh, something different. I, uh, huh. My life at that time wasn't uh, going in, I didn't think, in the right direction. So I thought, uh, let's do something that I can't back out of. And what, what did Uncle Roger think of that? I don't think he... I don't know. Okay. All right. And what was your rank when you were... Uh, when you entered into the service and when you left, what was your rank? Uh, you started at a private. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think I made $59 a month. <laughs> really? Uh, okay. And when I uh, got out, I was married. Uh, I was specialist five. Uh, let's see. I don't quite remember what I was making, but it was a, a substantial amount of money because 
you get a, a, a compensation for being married, and then uh, oh. they were off post at the time, so you got a compensation for that. So okay. we were making pretty good money. All right. And where did you serve, and how long were you serving? I, the first three years, I was in uh, Germany. I was a truck driver, mm -hmm. and I uh, re-enlisted again. Okay. I went back to school, and I was an aircraft electrician. Mm -hmm. That's when I went to Vietnam. Okay. I was in uh, six years. All right. And when you um, you were in Germany the first two years, and when you went over to Vietnam, you were actually in Vietnam there. You weren't stationed anywhere else. You were in this, the country? Yes. And can you tell us about any vehicles or planes or ships that you worked on? You worked on helicopters. Yes, and on, mostly on Hueys. Okay. Uh, we had a few Cobras, and uh, we had uh, one Chinook, and we had one fixed plane. I worked on every one of those. Okay. What was your favorite? Uh, probably the Huey. That's what you worked on the most. We probably had 50 of those. Oh, wow. Uh, so uh, you were working on those uh, constantly. Okay. All right. And did you bring back any mementos for yourself or your family? I don't believe so. Okay. <laughs> well, some people do that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Can you tell us about any awards or recognitions you received for your actions during your time in the service? I got the uh, uh, Vietnam medal. I got a accommodation from uh, saying that uh, I put in service in Vietnam. Okay. Uh, and uh, a couple of years ago, I got uh, one from the National Guard unit when we went out to uh, when we visit. Uh, mm -hmm. They also gave us a plaque. Mm -hmm. And did you ever travel home on leave when you were in the Oh, city? yeah. Quite. Uh, well, once a year, you always get a chance to do that. Okay. And did friends or family ever come and visit you when you were Well, overseas? my wife my wife came when I was in Vietnam. I took my R&R &R to Hawaii. Uh, well, uh, I got in. Well, she wasn't my wife then, but she was, uh, we were engaged. We met in Vietnam, I in uh, Hawaii for uh, one week. And what were your the favorite places that you did go? What what were they? Uh, probably Germany was a very uh, uh, good time. Mm -hmm. And how how different was it from your hometown being in Germany? Uh, not not a whole lot because Germany really had the same client and uh, mm -hmm. uh, latitude that uh, uh, Wisconsin had, so the weathers were about the same. Uh, we had mountains, but uh, that's probably the only difference uh, from Wisconsin okay. to Germany. Okay. And can you tell us your favorite story that you remember, your favorite memory from when you were overseas? Hmm. I guess my favorite was a, a, a was really a good friend with a guy named uh, Thurman Kennedy when I was in Germany. And we went downtown, uh, I think I had one week left to, uh, before I was going to ship out of Germany. And we went downtown with every intent to get a tattoo. Okay. Uh, Thurman got one, but I really didn't uh, find one I liked. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, uh, we really got drunk. Okay. We, uh, we had a good time. Uh, he paid for the whole thing. and uh, But... Uh, I really uh, kind of miss that guy. Mm -hmm. I did see him once after I got, uh, uh, before I went to, to uh, Vietnam. I did get to see him once more. Okay. Do you, where does he live now? He lives in Kansas City, Kansas. Oh, okay. So he's still living? Yes, okay. as much as I know. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, thanks so much for spending the time with us, and I appreciate you. Um, doing this demonstration with me. Well, I hope it uh, helps someone. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I guess there's always a lot of uh, reasons and uh, ideas that are in your head that you probably never forget. Uh, some good, some bad, uh, but uh, 
I think they're going to be in there for forever. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks. Mm -hmm.